When we come back, we're going to do two things. We're going to talk to uh, catch up with Chris, en- Chris Ensing, uh, who'll give us an update on the forest fires. We're also going to talk to a um, really interesting man who had a great big corporate job and then hit that point in life that a lot of us hit uh, where we felt like we needed to change, but most of us don't. He did. We'll hear all about it coming up. And I'm Karen Gordon in today for Nanaba Duncan. It's the final half hour of Saturday's Fresh Air. Thank you for tuning in this morning. We still have lots coming up. Uh, have clutter. Call Steve. That's Stephen Eilert. He's a professional declutterer, a professional organizer. But how he got to this stage in his life is a life lesson, I think, for all of us. We'll hear his story coming up. If you're feeling overwhelmed in your house or in your life, then my next guest has some words of wisdom for you. Fifteen years ago, Stephen Eilert had a success successful career working at an executive level. But after a moment of crisis, he walked away and ended up building a new career in an industry he didn't even know existed until he found himself suddenly doing it. Today, he's a professional organizer, speaker, and an author. He tells his story and talks about why life gets messy for some people in a new book called The Domestic Archaeologist. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Karen. So let's talk about you first. A lot of people go through periods where they hate their jobs, where they find it hard to get out of bed, but they do nothing. You hit a breaking point. So how did you know that it was a breaking point for you? You know, I I run into a lot of people and they tell me things like, I can't go on, I can't go any, I hate my job. And I rarely meet people who love their job. But when I do, I like to see the sparkle in their eyes and why it happened that way. In my case, I realized, I hit a breaking point where I realized I was successful in the wrong career. How did Uh, you know that? um, Well, I I had been... Because you were successful. Yeah, yeah. And it was, but it was something that, it was more of a family thing. You know, my father was an engineer. My brother was in NASA, you know, this, this sort of thing. And you were, you were sort of prodded along. And I remember them always saying, you know, get a real job, you know, be creative, but get a real job. So for the longest time, I worked at being successful, but in the wrong career. And I've run into people who were unsuccessful in the right career. But what I wanted was to be successful in the right career. So what, let's go back to that breaking point. Because again, a lot, you're, you're right, a lot of us just stay put, and we think we're going to stick it out. Yeah, I thought, I, th- I think it was mainly with me, it was when I was multitasking, like really multitasking. In those days, they were pi- piling on, piling on. At one point, I was doing 13 projects at the same time, and I realized I actually froze. I was one of those cases that froze in the corridor, and a friend passed me by and asked me, and that was a key element. He asked me, are you okay, Steve? And I said, John, I, 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 I was, I was, I was, I just, yeah, I smell burnt toast. It was one of those where I actually, I, I, my brain, my body, everything told me, if you go forward with this, you're going to have a heart attack and you're going to die. It was clear as a bell. Now, ironically, the guy who asked me that question did have a heart attack and was wheeled out, you know, the building on a gurney. He went on to change his career, uh, which was an inspiration to me and do other things. But it really was a mind-body combination. And it just threw me into thinking what I could do to reinvent my world. And I think a key element was also that I gave myself permission to fail. A lot of people, failing is underappreciated in, in our society. You know, when you can give yourself permission to fail, you can try something new. And I'm seeing a lot of people now because we're sort of the last pensionable generation. So I'm seeing a lot more people who are taking chances because they have to. They have to try and they want to go for what they really love to do. And when you're not doing what you love to do, what is your innate talent, you dissolve by inches. And I see too many people who just dissolve. And the ones who are really good and loved what they do, when they retire, they feel like they're they're at a loss in life. They've given up the things that they love and they don't last very long in retirement. That's why I, I, I'm constantly telling people I'm doing lectures now about reinventing your life, you know, looking for your muse. And it sounds a bit hackneyed and, you know, you know, old fashioned, but it really is the case where you've got to see what, what really is your inner self and start working towards that. You walked away from all the things you just described, a job that you were good at, mm-hmm. that you, you had money, you had uh, an ability to make things happen, you were managing projects, you had a pension. Yeah, what, well, benefits and pension, yeah. And, and you fell Attention. into an organi- a, a job that you didn't even know existed. existed. Yeah. So wh- did you have this, was there a time between, Did you were you able to just walk out and say, okay, I'm, I can't, I'll die if I do this, but I don't know what this new thing is? 
yet? Yeah, I didn't have that plan B. And it wasn't, it, it was an irrational kind of thing, but I really had to start looking at my skill set. And fortunately, and I, and I had tried other things. I applied for Canada Customs and got some of the highest marks they'd ever had. And one of my friends actually went on and she became Canada Customs. But I, I discovered that I had a friend at the time, and it was very fortuitous, she was a real estate agent. And she kept telling me stories about how she can't really deal with all the emotional level of all 50 years of people's stuff and how do you, what do you do with it and how do you guide people through this process. She didn't have the time. As good as she was, she really thought, you know, as, as since I was such a good people person and had that interactive skill and I wasn't using it so effectively where I was, it was one of the reasons I left. I needed to be a teacher and somebody who, who guided people. And that was a key element. She says, well, why don't you come along and help me get it's, – it's a smaller kind of existence. It's one-on-one. -on -one, you're guiding people versus a, a corporate uh, office uh, project, which was multi-million dollars. And you had to have everything within 10 percent of budget and all that sort of nonsense. Um, it was small, and it appealed to me, something small to guide people – in that respect, and it started with her, and then it was another agent, and another agent, and I get referrals of referrals. And now I'm to the point where I don't advertise anymore. It's uh, agents just give me houses, and you know, and then I get people who have learned what I've done, and they bring me in, even if they're not selling. So I've learned that the skills that I really love, this interactive teaching um, and guiding people, is just a boon for for this particular, and I'm, it's odd because I'm one of the very few males in my profession. Uh, I used to be a director with a group called Professional Organizers in Canada, and there's just a handful of guys. And it's kind of funny whenever I do go to a conference and there's only a couple of other guys, we look at each other the way dogs look at each other across the street. And we <laughs> want to sort of, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> <laughs> So you're a, you're a professional organizer. Yes. Can you talk about what that is? Well, the difference between, uh, say, a stager and a professional organizer, a stager will get a multitude of little details to make the house home and garden ready and make it look really nice. It's not, it's, it's not or, or overly yeah. ergonomic, right. but it looks great on the camera. Whereas an organizer, a professional organizer, dips into the people's lives. That's why I call it domestic archaeology. Uh, that's why I wrote the book, started writing the books, The Domestic Archaeologist. It's because you get to dip into people's lives and guide them and find out what serves them at a point in their lives where they're downsizing, they're letting go. They don't know what to keep or not to keep. And often people are completely you know, bum-fuzzled <laughs> about, about what they need to do and how to move forward. You also go into the, and work with people who are just living their lives and their house has gotten out of control in yes. terms of mess. Yeah. So again, like you come from this big corporate world and now you're finding yourself one-on-one -on -one with people where, where you have to basically uh, get them somehow to let you into the thing they're most embarrassed about. Yeah, it's it's a, a position of privilege because you're stepping into somebody's private space. Once they know I'm not there to judge, I'm not there to tell them what to do, and I'm certainly not you know there to tell them what to get rid of. I'm there to sort of feel their vibe, to find out what serves their lives and what doesn't. And a lot of times these people are almost at a breaking point. Um, and it's not always uh, uh, corporations or real estate lawyers who need to get a house cataloged for sale or whatever they need to do. Often it's the, the touching ones that I really remember. I had a lady, uh, young mother, and she got a hold of me and she said in her email, her young daughter came to her and said, can daddy move us to a neat house? And she realized at that moment what it was doing to her kids. So I had to discover, and that was a house where I couldn't get in through the front door without shouldering it and moving it, moving all the stuff that was on the floor. Things had just become so overwhelmed. There was such pressure from family to be the perfect mom, the perfect everything, that things just fell by the wayside. So a lot of times it's my job. It's it's kind of like detective work. Where did the thread of their life go off 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 balance? As I had one client who said, uh, help me find the thread of my life. And I love that. Wow. It's a detective story. And, and it's this one-on-one -on -one interaction. And once people have that ally that they didn't know existed, they just glam onto that. And, oh, God, we're we going to do this. We're going to do that. You know? And often I find that a lot of that, the household, even these days, it falls on the, the lady of the house, the right. woman of the house. So 
it's it's a talent I just learned to love and, and hone. You can tell you love this yeah, relative sorry. to the other thing. <laughs> no, it's great. It's wonderful. But I, I think it's so, like, suddenly you are, when somebody says, help me find the thread of my life, like, I want to weep. Like, it's a very huge yeah. thing that happens yeah, there. And a lot of the stories, I love to write humor because I love the quirks and the, the warp and woof of, of mankind. Mm-hmm. I love to go in there and I love to find, and I, no names, but I will discuss and talk about various stories because I find it's in the stories that we glean our inspiration from from what happened to other people. Because a lot of times people think that they're alone. And once they realize they're not alone, that so many other people are in a similar situation, uh, the, the top two questions I get when as soon as I walk into a house is, is this the worst you've ever seen? Or um, one to 10, how do I rate? And once I tell people, oh, just you're not even a two, <laughs> they, they go, oh, I can work with that. You know, uh-huh. so they may have just the room of shame, you know, the one that you tell visitors not to look into when you go to the bathroom, that kind of room. Some people have an entire house. I may have a bin of shame here and there, mm-hmm. but it's um, it's one of those where it's every house is different because I will have people say, how long does it take to do a house? And I go, well, how long is a piece of string? I don't know. You know I'd, why do we do this? Why have we, some of us, gotten to the state where our lives, therefore, our houses are out of control? Is it busyness? Is it emotional issues? It's busyness, and I think it's not applying reality because you're expected to do everything instantaneous. A big problem with most people is they want to want it to be all or nothing. I'm going to go into this room. I'm going to get it all done. Boom. But what happens? Your your escape mechanism kicks in. You start to go, I can't do this. In in, in Inside, your brain goes, I can't do this. Run away, run away. So a lot of times people, if they have the all or nothing mindset, nothing gets done. Um, I do find that uh, guys, there's such a a funny uh, commonality between ladies and guys. Guys are very time and task oriented. You know, I'm going to do this for 10 minutes and then I'm done and then I'm going to go and, you know, self-medicate with a golf club or something. Uh, Whereas (laughs) the ladies are hemisphere to hemisphere and it's too many options. I'm going to do this, 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 I'm going to do this. You shouldn't do that, you know. So it's, I, I find that people just are overwhelmed by expectations. And often they don't give themselves permission to just pull back and do a little bit every day and make it that their normal. So it's 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 interesting. There's just a world of aspects of this, and I know it's not a lot of time to talk about no, it. No, one qu- one quick tip though. What would, if somebody's going to do some house cleaning and they want to enter whatever mess they have? What would be a quick tip for them? Um, time and task. Choose the time. Like limit the amount of time that you're going to do. Go in there and you're going to go. You know, I'm just going to do this for 15 minutes, and then I get to to escape. Uh, that is a perfect thing. Task, choose one thing. As I said, ladies will say, I'm going to do this, 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 and this. It's too much. Steve, so. thank you so much for coming in. What a pleasure <laughs> to talk to you. Well, my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, that's Steve Eilert. He's a professional organizer, a speaker, and an author. His book is called The Domestic Archaeologist, Confessions of a Professional Home Declutterer. You can find more on his website, which is decluttering.ca. And that's it for today's Fresh Air. I'm Karen Gordon for Nanaba Duncan. Don't forget, you can hear our interviews again on the CBC Radio app. Stay tuned for World Report with Julia Chapman, followed by The House with guest host Dave Cochran. We'll talk to you tomorrow.